The Dispute Resolution Center was founded in 1986 by the Florida Supreme Court to provide education and research in the field of alternative dispute resolution, to promote the use of alternative processes through the Florida courts, and to provide technical assistance to those courts establishing such programs. In 1987, comprehensive legislation was adopted which allows the trial judge to order pretty much any civil case to mediation or arbitration subject to the judge's discretion and Supreme Court rule. These court rules also contain the qualifications and training requirements for individuals who wish to become certified and serve as mediators for the courts. Successful completion of this training program is one step toward meeting those requirements. This program will review what you can expect from this training program, as well as from the certification process. Welcome to a Certified Mediation Training Program. I'm Kimberly Tosh with the Dispute Resolution Center. The mediation training standards and procedures were adopted by the Florida Supreme Court to ensure that individuals who attend a Certified Mediation Training Program receive information on the basic skills necessary to mediate cases for the Florida courts. At a minimum, at training you will receive a written set of materials which contains copies of the applicable statutes and court rules governing mediation. During training, you will participate in at least one exercise on reducing an agreement to writing and you will be presented with 90 minutes of instruction on ethics including a review of the code of conduct and disciplinary procedures for mediators. In addition, you must participate in at least two role play mediation exercises. One is the sole mediator and at least one is a party to the mediation. These exercises will be conducted under the observation of an experienced mediator who will be watching only one role play during each segment. You will also receive a written critique form. This form is for you to keep. Prior to your role play experience as mediator, you will watch a live simulation or video of a mediation. At the conclusion of the training, you must complete an evaluation and an audit form on the required components for this certified mediation training program. Your candid answers to these questions will not affect the processing of your mediator certification application. Upon successful completion of the training program, you will receive a certificate of completion of the training from your training provider. A copy of this certificate must be included with your application for mediator certification. Please note, there is a two-year time limitation between mediation training and applying for mediator certification. If you have any questions or concerns regarding the certified training you have received, please contact the Mediation Training Review Board through the center. Once you have successfully completed training, your training provider will provide you with an application for certification and will send your name and contact information to the center. Each area of mediator certification requires a trainee to earn 100 points to be eligible for certification. There are minimum point levels in each of the areas for mediation training, education, mediation experience, and mentorship categories. In addition, all mediators are required to be 21 years of age and be of good moral character. For each item you are claiming points, you must attach written verification of those points to your application. Points for advanced degrees require a copy of your diploma and receipt of your transcript mailed directly from your educational institution from your highest degree. Miscellaneous points for licensure to practice law, psychology, accounting, social work, mental health, health care, education, or mediation require a copy of your license. To demonstrate the good moral character requirement for certification, you will be required to disclose past criminal activities, even if adjudication was withheld, and ethical or moral breaches. 
In addition, you must submit two original letters of character reference. These letters may come from anyone who knows you except family members and must be addressed to the center. The center will also conduct a criminal background check at the time of application and upon each renewal. You will also select the rotation list for the judicial circuits upon whose list you would like to be placed. Certification as a mediator is statewide, but you will only appear on the list for those circuits which you indicate. Your application must also contain verification of your mentorship activities. The mentorship process was created to bridge the gap between training and mediating cases. You may elect any combination of observations and supervised mediations to reach the required point level for mentorship in the area of certification you are seeking, but note you must work with at least two different mentors. You may begin observing cases after starting a certified mediation training program, even if the program has not concluded. You may only participate in supervised cases after the conclusion of the entire training program. You must structure your mentorship for yourself. You should contact certified mediators to request their assistance in serving as your mentor. If you were sponsored into a DRC county mediation training by a court mediation program, your local mediation director will assist you with your mentorship requirements. As long as you work with a certified mediator, you may use pre-suit cases that are eligible to be filed with the court in the area you are seeking certification to fulfill your mentorship requirements. In addition, a federal court mediation conducted by a certified circuit civil mediator may be utilized to fulfill the circuit mentorship. If a mediation is conducted under rules and procedures other than those of the state trial court, those cases are not acceptable for mentorship. Examples of those cases include workers' compensation, homeowner association through DPBR, and federal EEOC cases. You must provide the case name, number, date you mentored, specify your role as observer or mediator, and have each mentor sign the mentorship form provided in the application package. Detailed information on the mentorship requirements is contained in the administrative order governing certification of mediators. Application and certification fees are listed in the application. You must notarize your application before sending it to the center. The center will confirm receipt of your application. In addition, if there are any problems with your application, you will be notified and given an opportunity to correct or amend the application. An incomplete application can only remain pending with the center for one year from the date of filing. Once complete, processing takes between six to eight weeks. You will be notified by letter when you have been certified and your name will automatically appear on the center's list of certified mediators on our website. This notification will contain your certification number and dates of certification. The center's website is listed at the end of this video. A short time after your certification is granted, you will receive a certificate signed by the Chief Justice of the Florida Supreme Court. Certification is for a two-year period, and you will be notified approximately three months prior to the date your certification lapses in order to renew your certification in a timely manner. There are penalties for allowing your certification to lapse. All certified mediators are required to report 16 hours of continuing mediator education applicable in the area of certification in each two-year renewal cycle. CME details are contained in the administrative order governing mediator certification. To review, the steps you will need to take to become a certified mediator are successfully complete this training course, fulfill your mentorship requirements, complete the application, 
send your completed application to the center with the appropriate fee. Now that you know what to expect from this training program and the certification process, I'd like to give you some more information on the activities of the center. In 1992, the Florida Supreme Court adopted a code of conduct for mediators and a disciplinary procedure to handle violations of this code. All grievances are handled by the Mediator Qualifications Board. Ethics advisory opinions can be obtained from the Mediator Ethics Advisory Committee. Complaints against certified mediation training programs are handled by the Mediation Training Review Board. All of these groups are staffed by the Dispute Resolution Center and you can contact them through us. Our contact information will be provided at the conclusion of this segment. All certified mediators are required to keep their addresses current with the center so that renewal materials are received timely. All proposed and actual amendments to the statutes, rules, and procedures will be provided in the center's online newsletter, The Resolution Report. All grievances filed with the Mediator Qualifications Board will be summarized for educational purposes and all Ethics Advisory Committee opinions printed in full. The Center also sponsors an annual conference. This is a wonderful opportunity for mediators and arbitrators from across the state to come together to learn from one another sharpen their skills, and complete their continuing mediator education requirements. The conference is typically held in August, and you can visit our website for more details. I hope you enjoy this training experience, and I look forward to seeing each of you at our next annual conference.